Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good day. Welcome to the Word in Business. First and foremost, we need to lift up our little ally Israel, the nation of Israel. They are under attack and we pray, we pray for that country that God will protect them and keep them safe in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, how we love Israel. Praise the Lord God. Anyway, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Professor Elder Jerome Smith, along with my wife, Dr. Sue Smith, which is also a prophetess and a doctor of divinity. Can I get an amen? Amen. She's also a real estate professional and a business lady and also in finance. Okay. Uh, so if you have any real estate or financial needs, you can give her a call at area code 310 770 Eight three eight nine. I hope I got that right. Repeat it. <laughs> okay, repeat it. <laughs> so I guess I did. Okay, area code three ten seven seven zero eight three eight nine. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to give thanks to doctors, Doctor Pastor Lorella Meyer and her husband Ken Meyer. They are <laughs> pastors of. Um, Mercy Church International, located in Bellflower, California. I had a short circuit there, but it came back. Yeah. And also there are the deans. They would be deans of International End Time Ministry International Bible University in Duarte. And also we'd like to give thanks and credit to Dr. Joseph Nazarella, who is in charge of End Time Ministry International Bible University internationally, yeah. and also Cross TV, along with Adam, we give credit to Adam for getting us going and uh, keeping us on track. He's very good at what he does, and we sure appreciate him. Thank you so much, Adam. And also, I'd like to introduce our son, Fabian, and he's going to blow the shofar and open up the meeting for us. Oh. Oh. Praise the Lord, calling all saints. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hello, thank you. And now you. we have to pick him up off the floor because he just passed out from that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. With all thank with, you, Fabian. We call him Fabulous Fabe. Yes, he's um He's also a porter in the church, and he loves his job, protecting the pastor and uh, even taking care of their dog. He seems what? to be active in doing that all the time, what? and he does a very good job. He does. Uh, yes. So with all said and done, Pastor... We I also mean, like to thank uh, Dr. and Pastor uh, Joe Jones. Uh, he started me um, here a little over four years ago in Cross TV, and um, he's been mentoring me, and he's part of my ministry as well. And I just want to um, say thank you to uh, Dr. Jones, and he I call him my little big brother, because <laughs> he, he's just a wonderful man of God, powerful man of God at, at that, but yet he's a, such a joy to be around, a lot of fun to be around. So, um, and today we're going to be talking about, we're going to continue about the uh, comparative market analysis. It's so important to know what you have and how much it truly costs for somebody to just come up to you and say, oh, your house is worth this. They may be a couple of hundred thousand dollars lo lower or a couple of million dollars lower and uh, in some areas and or too high. And... So we're going to get through that as well. It's, it's sort of a continuation from last week. I didn't really have a whole lot of time to go through it because there's so much information in it. And I love, I just love teaching. My uh, pastor, I also am a professor at EMIBU. Uh, just one class a week, that's all the time I have. And I uh, can't volunteer anymore. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have too much on my plate right now, but I love keeping busy. You can't keep me still for a moment. And uh, I'm going to just turn this off for a moment because I'm going to share a screen and I'll be right back. You can hear me, but you can't see me. So here we go. I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to 
share my screen again. Put in there. Nope, that didn't work. So, I'm not uh, a concierge of, <laughs> of Zoom here. So, let me see here. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And then I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to, I guess this is the only way that I can do it, is... Here we go. I'll get you in there real soon. Here we go. Praise the Lord. There we go. Here. So uh, this is uh, the cover page of a comparative market analysis. And you want to work with somebody that it's okay to work with somebody that's brand new as long as they have good backup in their office. For instance, in my office, we have about a thousand agents and um, we have legal representative outside of our office and our broker is also an attorney and he's such a great help. And we have a ton of managers that do different things such as commercial. I'm involved with commercial, residential, and um, I love selling apartment buildings because uh, it's, it's a little different than selling single family dwellings. So anyway, this is what I would do if I was doing a market evaluation. I would have a nice uh, cover sheet on there, letting you know that this is, and there, the acronym for comparative market analysis is CMA. And uh, you want to know some details about who you're dealing with and the company that they're uh, working with. That's very important. And we're going to hit Beverly Hills again. I thought that would be fun. And just a little bit about, know a little bit about your agent, a little bit about their company. We have a very high tech company and um, our goals are to have a good balance, have integrity, growth, loyalty, leadership, character, commu good communication, creativity, community, teamwork, and service. And they like us to smile once in a while too. And here we go, what is a CMA? CMA is sort of like a comparative market analysis. It's sort of like a, what an appraiser would do. But you never see the appraisal. And, and the appraisal comes in after you open up escrow. So you want to know what your property is worth prior to going into escrow, prior to even getting a listing to see if you even want to sell it. Um, no, as it says here, no two homes are identical, which is why choosing a sales price or offer price for a home can be challenging. That's where comparative market analysis or CMA is most useful. When you go, when an appraiser goes to a property, they'll look at the square footage first. I told you this last week. Uh, then they'll look at the size of the, pro the whole property, the land, and then they'll look at upgrades. Has it, is it painted? Has it been upgraded? Is it old? Is it new? And they only do visuals. They don't go underneath the house. Normally speaking, I've never seen any appraiser go underneath the house. And they normally don't go into the attic. They want to know square footage. They want to know the upgrades that, that are there. And that's where an, an agent also will come in. Because what I do, I don't follow the appraiser around because they hate that. Because by law, they cannot be receive any influence from the agent or from the homeowner. They have to go by their own record. And, but, so I just hand them some comparables and then I leave them alone if there's any questions don't uh, hesitate to ask me but I'm always there I always if it's my listing or if it's my sale I always meet the appraisal the, the appraiser when they are doing the appraisal 
And um, what is a CMA? Again, no two houses are alike. But what they'll do is they'll go half mile radius around subject property and um, do what I said, get the measurements, see if there's any upgrades. And they want at least three sold listings in the area within a half a mile radius. If they can't find one within a half a mile, then they'll go out to a mile. And it goes from there. And um, how is a, a CMA created? Well, a realtor, we have the multiple listing service and we have all the tools to be able to put together a good market evaluation. We can circle an area, but what I usually do, I start with a, a half a mile and I, I go with the square footage. You can't, it's very difficult for an appraiser to, they're looking for three comparables, comparable in size, that is, comparable in lot, that is. And sometimes it's difficult because sometimes we have horse properties in our areas and there's just uh, different standards for different uh, pieces of property. But if, when you're with a professional realtor with a good company to back them up and sometimes you're working with your daughter because it's her first listing, please make sure that they have good legal backup in their office. It's very, very important because um, you don't want to have any problems with your buyer after you close escrow. And I'm very, very careful when performing a listing and a closing. How accurate is a uh, comparative market analysis or CMA? We're going to call it a CMA. CMAs are pretty accurate if they go by the guidelines. If they go outside of the guidelines, sometimes the lending institution will call them on it. Well, this one is three miles away. Why did you put that one in? Well, Mr. L uh, uh, Money Man, that was the only one that matched the house that I'm dealing with, with subject property. And so the tighter the market evaluation is, the easier for it to go through the lender, if there is even a loan. But sometimes when people are paying all cash, they still want to do an appraisal. And uh, if it doesn't appraise correctly, sometimes they would uh, like to reevaluate the amount of money that they're paying and um, ask for a reduction. And sometimes a, a seller will see that they didn't get an accurate uh, price on it and they will say, they would probably want to keep it at a higher price or lower it. But so it's really important. You have to be 100% honest. Um, you have to have a, an agent that's 100% honest, not to underbid you too long. There's different ways. List your property under market for a faster sale. Market it um, at market. It's all about location, location, location. Or if you put it, and I'll show you this, if you over uh, uh, price it, then you're going to probably, in a, in a market that we're having right now, there's a lot of people listing, then you're going to have problems selling it, and it's going to most likely sit on the market for a while. Or not. It just really all depends on the property, too. So... Did I get frozen here? No, nope. you can go. Oh, there I am. How about that? And so this is the area that I chose. This time I didn't do a half a mile radius. I just thought it would be fun to have some very expensive, beautiful um, homes from Beverly Hills to compare. These are the homes. You can notice here where I'm circling, there's only one sold and one pending. Look at over here where... Um, the square footage, excuse me, uh, doesn't show that, it doesn't show the price per square foot, but over here it will. This is price per square foot. This is the one that sold, 
and is 1,526 square feet. Um, uh, price, and that's the price per square foot. And that's pretty good because um, many years ago, when I first started working in Beverly Hills, the price per square foot was about a thousand dollars. And um, so, and here's one that's is that pending. There's yes, this one is pending right here, and it's pending at one thousand two hundred twenty-seven. Uh, uh, can you ask him to turn his phone up, please? Or close his door. Thank you so much. So, I, I just don't like to be interrupted. I told my son to close his door, turn his phone up. <laughs> God bless him. He's the best. He's the best. If that's the only problem that I have with him, then I'm very blessed. So price per square foot is 1,227 square feet, and it has seven bedrooms, 11 baths uh, in there. This one has seven bedrooms, 13 baths. Uh, these are beautiful, beautiful houses. But look at here. Look at my cursor. These are all the active houses. And look at the price per square feet over here. So what I'm saying is you don't want to look at this one. This was way over... You know, it seems very, very high because it's 5,531 5, 5, square feet per square feet, uh, price per square foot. And that's a bit high. I did it this way, side by side, because this is what an appraiser, whenever I meet with an appraiser, I do side by side. If I'm meeting with a seller, then I'll have a lot of pictures in there. And I have a client calling me right now, it seems. That's okay because you're important as well. And um, so this is what an appraiser will want to see so he can compare side by side. And um, the price, 19000 13000 24000 Well, this is 13000 compared to these prices. And then look at the... Uh, a price per square foot, 1,500. This is 1,200, and this is 2,485. So be careful in how you price your property. I know everybody wants, all the sellers want more money, and buyers want to pay less money. And our sellers are, are you guys are really smart. And buyers are too. They know what they're looking for. And so um, here's some more. Here's, here's a restaurant. Aren't these beautiful homes? Gosh, I'll live in any of them. <laughs> any of these. They're just gorgeous. And some of them have magnificent views of uh, the Pacific Ocean. It's just living a dream. But you know, as believers, we stand on the integrity and accuracy of God's word. We do the word. We're, um, while we're here on planet Earth, and lo, we're going to have eternal rewards. We'll be the ones living on that big house on the, on the hill. Not that we can't do that now, because God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in good health, right? So I'm moving right along here, and... Uh, Oh, look, Cannon Drive, I work on that street. So this is how you compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. They're all different. There's not two houses that are, unless you're in a planned development, but normally speaking, there's no two houses that are alike, especially after they've been lived in because some of them very much lived, lived in. This last one that I sold was, um, it needed pretty much everything, and it was... A delightful house. I really love that house, but it took a little while to sell it because um, price and condition. And so let's look at this comparable pro property statistics. So this is the sold one that sold at 1526 It took an average, it took 141 days to get it on the market, get it into escrow, and close escrow. Um, that's a long time to have something on the market. So um, it sold 
at a very good price too. I think it sold. This one sold for about five hundred thousand dollars less than the. Let me see. What did that sell at? Hmm. Sold comparable. That's active. Active. Where's the sold property? That one. This one sold. This price was nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five, and um. The uh, sold price is eighteen thousand. I mean, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> he just caught me there. Nineteen million nine hundred ninety-five thousand, and then the sold price was eighteen million five hundred thousand, and um, sold this January. Somebody was very blessed with this beautiful house. Very blessed. All of these houses are beautiful. They're worth. Um, their weight in gold because the location, the way they're built, the the way they're built in in the hills here are it's just magnificent, just magnificent. It's, it's, you would be so surprised to see any of these houses. So and then here's the average price per square foot within all the active listings is two hundred six hundred and seventy eight dollars. And uh, the average days on market right now is 10. The nice thing about it, if it's location, 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 um, if they're sort of average or a little above, they will eventually sell. There is really not that many expired listings in this area. But again, be careful. Be careful on how you list your property. And there's just a lot of different... Um, it took 141 days to sell that one sold house. And this is just in the last three months, these listings. So that it, it, these are just really important things for you to know. And I'm going to continue in this. Uh, ask your uh, realtor what they're going to be doing, and they should probably have a list of things to tell you. Why you need a real estate professional. We'll get into that next week because it's very important. Well, I think I'm just going to sell it on my own. There, remember, escrow companies are not licensed realtors, and they're not. You can't hold them responsible for acting as a realtor. And uh, I just don't. I would hate to see you being put in a bad position. Because if something horrible goes wrong and you didn't do it right, it's uh, you have a good chance of ending up in court. And, and I don't want to see that happen with you. So uh, with that said, we have one minute. And um, I would like my husband to just pray us out here. Praise the Lord. God is good. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father God, creator of heaven and earth. You're an awesome God. We'd like to give an invitation for everyone out there. The Word of God says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So that's Amen. our job. That's our part. And God I just pray for everybody right now in the name of Jesus Christ that God will give you more than you can ever ask, think, or even imagine. God, I thank you for the things that I taught today, that you will take it to heart and, and, and work accordingly on your listings and your presentations. And God, Father God, I thank you that you find that all these people, if they, if they do decide to sell or buy, that they get good representation from a realtor. And I thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your peace, and health and prosperity. But most of all, God, that we can be at peace so that we can hear your still small voice and walk in love, which is the most powerful thing that we can do. And I thank you for these things, and I claim these things in the powerful name, which is above all names, Christ Jesus, our living Lord and returning Savior. Amen.